Um, last week I was writing some front end code for a toggable tag component in React. And it was the type of feeling that when I was finished, I thought, I'm a genius. So let's build it. Here's a look at the final product. It's a list of grade levels, K through 12, and the user can click on any of these items to check them on or off. Cool, so let's jump into the code. Since this is a React app, let's start by using create React app. So here I'm going to say npx create React app toggle grades. This will take a hot minute. Now, let, I, la, 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 la. now let's go into our project folder. So I'll say CD toggle grades, and you'll see here are our options. So we can just say yarn start, and this starts our development server. Okay, I'm gonna minimize this a little bit. And here under toggle grades, I have all the files that create React app created. I'm gonna start by creating a folder called toggle tag.js. Within the new file, I'm going to type RAFC. I have an extension running within VS Code that will expand this to give me a functional React component. I'll include a link to the package in the description below. Perfect. We'll keep our component named toggle tag, and I'm going to make this a named export. In fact, one of the things that I like to do when I'm working within React is to make everything named exports. This consistency helps prevent errors in the future. I don't have to check to see whether something has a default export or it's a named export. I just know it's always a named export. I'm going to add the word toggle tag within our component just so I can make sure that it's working. Okay, great. Now I'm going to jump over to our app.css and I'm actually gonna delete everything that's there. We can come back to that later. I'm going to jump over to our app.js and delete most of this boilerplate code that is here. Give that a save. Awesome, now let's import our new component. So import toggle tag from toggle tag and I'm going to add it here so that we can make sure that it's working. Give that a save and a refresh, and you'll notice uh, it showing up as we would have expected. Now, as a quick aside, if you're wondering why this is styled, it's sans serif, uh, there's actually a index.css where it's pulling in some of these default styles. So let's jump back over to our toggle tag.js. Usually when I'm writing code, I like to step out the HTML and that lets me see how the styles that I'm writing are affecting my code. When you think about toggle tags, it's just like a checkbox. You can toggle it on or off, just like a checkbox, check or unchecked. And in a form, they're all gonna appear as a group. In our case, grade levels. Let's hide our sidebar here and let's add our checkbox into our HTML. So I'll say input type equals checkbox, and let's give this a name of grades and a value of K. I'm gonna display K right next to it. So if I give this a save, you'll see uh, exactly what we would have expected. Okay, I'm gonna jump over to app.js and duplicate our component a few times, and this will give us a feel for what we're working with. Let's start looking at the styling. I'm gonna pull up app.css, and one of the first things that we'll wanna do is to get rid of our checkbox. So I'm gonna say input type equals checkbox. I'm gonna say display none. Give that a save, and you'll notice all of our checkboxes disappear. So when we're styling this, we want to be able to style the checked and the unchecked state. So fortunate for us, you don't necessarily have to have a checkbox in order to check it. Uh, if you're working on a form, usually you can click the label or the text right next to the checkbox and it'll still check or uncheck it. So we'll use that to our advantage. Going back to our toggle tag.js, let's add a label around our input and then just to separate the text from our checkbox a little bit more, let's wrap this with a span. Now, anytime I click on this K, it's actually toggling our checkbox on and off. If you wanna double check, you can come over to app.css and comment out display.none and you'll see I can click on the K and it will check and uncheck our checkbox. So I'm going to uncomment out our display none and keep styling. So 
So let's target our text. So I'm going to say span and let's give it a font weight of bold, a border of three pixels, solid, and we'll say purple for right now. I want a border radius so the corners are rounded. So I'm going to say 30 pixels. I'm going to do cursor pointer so that when we're hovering over the word, our cursor will change to a finger. And then I'm going to say display inline block and padding five pixels, 10 pixels. So uh, the padding on the top and bottom is gonna be five pixels and the padding on the left and the right is gonna be 10 pixels. Say margin right is 10 pixels. So this will give us some space in between each of our items. I'm gonna give it a min width of 50 pixels so that if it's K or if it's 12th grade, it's still generally taking up the same amount of width. And I'm gonna say text align center. And give that a save. And you'll see there are items. Let's give this a little bit of space away from the edge of the browser. So I'm gonna come back over to our app.js and you'll see there's a class name of app. So on our app.css, I can come up here and target that. Whenever you're formatting your CSS, it's generally a good idea to have your classes listed in the same order that they appear in your HTML. Here I'm gonna say the app has a padding of 50 pixels. So I'm gonna give that a save that pulls it down. So now in the styling, we just need to handle the click, the toggled state. So fortunately for us, CSS actually has a pseudo element that we can use to target that state. If I come over here, I can say input type equals checkbox chat. The only problem here is that we've hidden our checkbox and we actually want to style the span next to the checkbox. So we can actually target that by using a plus. So the plus here says the item next to, and this is the item that we're styling. I'm gonna move this below our span definition here. And here we can start to style this. I want this to have a background of purple and a color of white. So if I give that a save, you'll notice this item is checked and it already changed. You can toggle the items on and off. Okay, so let's keep taking this to the next level. I wanted the elementary, middle school, and high school to all be styled a little bit differently using different colors. So the easiest way to do this is if we add a class to the label. So if we come back over to our toggle tag.js, I'm going to add a class of grade K. Now the reason I put grade in front of K is because when we get into first, second, and third grade, that it has a number at the beginning and CSS doesn't like it when our classes start with a number. So that's why we're prepending that with the word grade. Now within our CSS, we can target those specifically. So I'm going to say uh, grade K input type equals checkbox plus span. We want to give this a border color of pink. And when it is checked, copy this. We want it to have a background color of pink. Give that a save. You'll see that that's working. Now we can call these our elementary school blocks. And we can simply add all the elementary school classes to this section. So I can say duplicate and we'll want this to have first, duplicate it again and add second. And then when we get ready to do middle school and high school, it'll look very similar. Before we get too deep down this road, let's remember that this is a React component, and so we'll want it to be dynamic. We want to be able to pass props into this item. If we open up our toggle tag.js, we want to be able to pass in what grade it is. So here I'm going to add grade as a prop, and we can change our value here to accept grade. And we'll also want grade to appear within the text. So if I give this a save, you'll notice that all of our text disappears. Well, that's because we need to come over to app.js and pass in what that grade is. So we'll want grade first, grade second, grade third, grade fourth, 
So the other thing that we want to consider is we want that class name on our toggle tag to be dynamic so that this says grade K, grade first, grade second, etc. And you'll remember this has to be prepended with the word grade. So we can't just use the same prop value that we're using here for the value in the text. But because this is JavaScript, we can have JavaScript build this string for us. And so we can use string interpolation. So I'm gonna let this know that we're using JavaScript. So I'm gonna surround it in brackets. And then I'm gonna change this to back ticks. And when I do this, I can say, hey, I'm gonna pass you a variable. So dollar sign, and then we're gonna do brackets again. And I'll say grade and give that a save. Uh, then you'll notice our third and our fourth checkboxes or toggles changed. And that's because in our app.css, we only listed first and second grade, which is awesome. We can just add third and fourth grade to our class definitions and those will be updated as well. One of the things that I like to do when I'm coding is just to code it out and not to worry about writing the cleanest or the driest code. Dry means don't repeat yourself. And then I start to see some of the patterns emerge. If I find myself copying and pasting or similar blocks of code, I know that's a great opportunity to refactor. Then our app.js, I see this as an opportunity right here. I'm repeating myself. So we can make this a lot cleaner. Yeah, let's create an object called grades, and then we can loop over it to display each of these check boxes. I'm actually gonna put this in a separate file so that if we want to list out our grades anywhere else within the application, we can do that. So here and under source, I'm gonna say new file and say grades.js. Now normally if this had a traditional structure, I'd put this inside a utils folder, uh, but it's fine for right here. So I'm gonna say const grades and I'm gonna make this an array. So I'm gonna say k first, second, third, then I'm going to export it so we can use it. Let me hide my sidebar and we're gonna jump over to app.js. Going to import our grades. And then here within our code, I'm actually going to say grades. So I'm referencing this variable that I'm importing. I'm gonna say grades.map. So map is a vanilla JavaScript function and we want to reference each individual grade with just the variable grade. Yeah, for each item in the array, I'm going to use this function. I'm going to return toggle tag. And we actually want these to be parentheses to show that we're returning something. I'm gonna give that a save. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of these extra toggle tags and give this a save. And you'll notice that it's starting to take some shape. Let's pass in each grade. So give that a save and you'll notice that it's working just as we would expect. But if we open up our console, you'll notice that we have this error here that says that each child should have a unique key. One of the things about React is when you're mapping over items, it wants to be able to identify each individual item so that it can keep track of it. Uh, and that can either be a number or a string, it just has to be unique. So in our case, we can just say, we know each grade is unique. They're all going to be different. So if I give that a save, you'll notice our error goes away. Awesome. 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 So things are starting to shape up. The one thing though that we still need to account for is styling our elementary, middle school, and high school checkboxes differently. So if we jump back over to app.css, you'll see that here we're starting to repeat ourselves. So this is a great opportunity to refactor. So how can we make it better? Well, CSS variables is a great place to start. The cool thing is, is that CSS variables is scoped, meaning that we can apply a variable to only a particular section of code. So you can define a CSS variable by using a double dash. So I'm gonna come up here and create an elementary school block and say grade K, grade first, grade second. And I'm going to define our CSS variables by giving this a double dash and saying grade color. Now this grade color can be anything that you would want to name it, but I'm just picking grade color for this and I'm going to say text color is black. Let's do the same thing for middle school and high school. For 
For the record, I'm just using standard color names, but these values could be hex values to match your site. Now, if I come down, I'm gonna delete this block of code and have these colors driven by these blocks of code. So to reference a variable, you're gonna call var, and this looks like a function. You're just gonna pass in the variable name that you want to use. So in our case, I wanna say grade color, and here we want our background to be grade color, and we want our text to be our text color. Give that a save and you'll notice we are winning. 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 I'll put a post on GitHub, link in the description below. Feel free to download it, modify it, use it, whatever you need. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button below. Hit the bell icon if you want to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Until then, keep coding.